Hi folks, so in a previous video I showed you how to make a distro plate by designing it in Fusion 360 and then you can maybe export it to another place and have it cut out or done in your own router if you happen to have one. The thing is though, those are quite basic plates, they just maybe connect one component to another one in place of tubing. Now one of the most requested features we get is how do you put a pump into one of those? Well, I've got a couple pumps here today, I've got a DDC and a larger D5 and I'm going to show you how you do that. First things first, we need to have, take a look at some existing tops and see how they work because being able to put them into a dish plate is not difficult. All you need to do is understand exactly how the pumps operate and then you can emulate it and put it into a plate of your own design. So we're going to start with a D5, mostly because this is the pump that I tend to recommend. They're very beefy, you're going to need a really big system to be able to outdo you know, a D5. They're going to supply all your needs for the most part. They're also very, very quiet. So when you set them on down to like 40%, you basically can't hear it. So that's why I like using them. They're also very easy to plumb in. They're just a bit big. So I've got this thermal take top here, and this operates in the same way as many of the other tops. It's exactly the same way as how the bits power tops work, for instance, in that you've got a ring here, you unscrew it, and you've got a square housing on the top. The eco ones are round. They operate again in a very same kind of fashion, just with a retention ring. Inside you'll find the pump itself. So all this housing here is primarily an aesthetic feature. I'll we'll try and bundle the cables through the hole there. And this is the pump itself. And you have an impeller, which connects like that, and an O-ring. Now there are going to be different sizes of O-rings. I think this is a 3.2 millimeter one that comes in this particular pump top. If you're working off an existing pump, I would recommend either buying a specific size that you know works or using one that already works and using the measurements from that. But let's take a look at what we actually need to consider with the pump top itself. So if we take a look at the inside, you'll notice we have basically a spiral pattern and a hole in the middle. So the hole in the middle is the inflow. That's where the coolant is going to be coming in. The impeller spins and it pushes it out around the edge. So that's why it's got this particular spiral pattern. The blocks themselves, they have multiple ports on the front and the top. So with that in mind, how are you going to emulate this is what you should be thinking. And you should also be taking a look at the different measurements that you can get from this. So I would really recommend using a set of these. And these are vernier calipers. Now the thing about this is if you're a proper machinist, you're probably not really going to want to use calipers. They're generally not very easy to use accurately. Maybe you'd want to use a micrometer or a depth gauge and other methods. But for home use, actually they're fine and you're going to be able to get within a margin of error that's perfectly acceptable for most machining for these sort of devices. You can vary by quite a lot and still be completely safe because the important thing is this o-ring. You just need to make sure that this o-ring has a tight seal around the pump and that your depths, things like the impeller here and the housing itself are correct. If that's fine, the pump should work absolutely flawlessly. So the way you're going to be measuring this is you take your calipers and then you measure down to the center like so and record it. So on this one, 12.5 millimeters. So when I'm designing my own D5 mounts, I tend to use 12 millimeters as the depth, which does mean you have to use something like 15 or 20 millimeter thick acrylic. You'll notice that the acetal that's been used on this one is actually really thick. That's about 30 millimeters thick, plus it has the mount on the back. So to give you an idea of using a distro plate, it's going to have to be thicker if you're going to be using a D5. Now the thing is, D5s are quite big, and if you've got a smaller system, you may want to use something smaller as well, like a DDC. Now these are very high head pressure, so they're still good for high restriction loops, and they work very, very well. Personally, I don't like using them as much because sometimes they can be harder for filling the loops, and also they can be quite loud. If you're running them at sort of higher RPMs, they have a kind of a whiny, loud sort of buzzing sound, whereas the D5 is a bit lower. Now these can still get very loud at max, but you're less likely to have to run these at a higher speed, I've found, than the DDC. So with DDCs, they actually work in pretty much exactly the same way in terms of how you put them into a plate. The difference is they're significantly smaller. So let's take a look at this one. 
Okay, so now we've got it taken apart, you can see how it is actually very similar in form factor and styling to the, DD, to the D5. The D5 is basically just the big boy. The impeller of a, D, of a DDC is much, much lower profile, and this reflects in the fact that you can use a much shallower cut for the actual pump top itself. So let's take a look at how deep this one is. There we go, so that's only 7.8, rounded up to eight millimeters for safety if you're, if you're worried. Much, much shallower, so you've got an extra four millimeters to play with in comparison to the D5. So that means you can use far thinner acrylic. The other handy thing is that because it's just a shallow disc, you can machine it quite easily out of this side, and then on this one, you can have maybe a channel coming in here. Instead, this one has it from the side. If you're doing this yourself, you may want to have the channel up here on the top instead. On the DDC, if you want to take this O-ring, you want to have it in the pump housing itself, like so. And then this is screws. You'd have it screwed into the distro plate around the back with a cutout like this in the plate. Very, very simple. Now the D5 is a little bit bigger because it's bigger and you've got to have a bit more consideration about the area that it's going to be taken up with. Um, and also a lot of them use these sort of screw fashions. Now that's really difficult to try and machining into something because the way they do these, they quite often turn them or they'll be thread milling them on a larger kind of vertical machine. If you're using a router, the problem in trying to do that is you either need to have a big plate that you then cut the whole depth down. So you have like a protrusion that you can then cut around the outside. That's not very easy because that's an awful lot of cutting time. Or the way that I do it is instead of using a screw mount, I make like a bracket maybe out of acrylic or out of aluminium. And then that just screws in in exactly the same way as the DDC. Just goes around the pump. So you have a pump like this. You have a hole which goes around the outside in the pump bracket and you just screw it in. This is what I did in the 1000D project. I've got three different brackets that go around the pumps on there and they just screw in from the back. Now, there is also another method you can use where instead of maybe trying to integrate this part into the, into the, like, the plate itself, you can make a separate pump bracket that's smaller and then has all the pump kind of workings in it and then you simply screw that into the back. So this is what they do in cases like the um, Singularity Computer Spectre or some of the other kind of uh, distro plates that you can buy online, mostly because that means that the distro plates can be made quicker and cheaper, and then they spend a bit more time making the brackets, and they can do that in like a batch and have maybe 10 made at once, and then you just screw them in. That's quite good, because you can also then interchange them between them. So I'm gonna show you two different methods later on in CAD how we're gonna do that. So we've taken a look at how the pump tops operate. Now it's time to go jumping into CAD, so we're gonna use Fusion 360 again, and let's design up a couple simple ones just to show how it works. And then you can take the principles and apply them to your own designs. I'm gonna make these particular designs that we're doing here freely available as well. So you'll be able to download those and then play around with things yourself. Okay, so we're in Fusion 360 now, and I'm gonna be showing you how to make something a little bit like one of these. So this is a pump distro for a DDC pump. Now, it's not a very complicated one. It's more of a proof of concept. I'm gonna be showing you roughly how to do it and how to think about maybe integrating something like this into a design of your own. Now the good thing about starting with a DDC is that it's less complicated than a D5. You don't have to worry about the O-ring groove because that's built into the housing itself. You also don't need to think much about brackets or anything like that to hold it in place because you just use normal screws through the housing. So let's take a look at how you make this. I'm also gonna be putting this file up for download in the description so you can play around with it yourself and maybe use some of the dimensions and things in your own drawings. Now it's worth mentioning, I'm going to be using this for an EK uh, pump housing. It might be different in some others. So I would always suggest taking your own measurements just to double check everything. Now, in all likelihood, most of these measurements are going to be the same, but I do know that sometimes O-rings change or maybe the screw placements can change a little bit. These are easy things to figure out by yourself. It's more about if you know what to look for, you can find it out yourself, take some calipers to it, just double check everything, measure twice, Cut once. It's so important with CAD because you might not get another chance to do it. Maybe if you have your own machine, it's easy enough, but if you're outsourcing that particular work, I would definitely recommend making sure that all your CAD work is perfect before sending it off because whoever's going to be cutting it can only deal with what you've sent them, basically. They won't be able to double check everything for you, so the onus is on you to get it right. So let's take a look at how you do it. Okay, so let's get started. Let's go with a new file. 
Now I'm going to be zipping along in a little bit of a greater pace than I did in the previous videos. If you're not that proficient maybe with Fusion 360, I would suggest going over some of those particular ones that we had previously. Uh, I will of course have the files up for download so you can play around with things afterwards and make sure if you do find that you've missed maybe measurements, just pause the video, take a look there uh, and all the information will be for you. But I'm going to be going quick and dirty, maybe not labeling absolutely everything, being quite as clean as I should be, but the files will be good for you. So let's start a new sketch. And using the center rectangle, let's make a plate, say, let's go 150 millimeters tall by 90 millimeters wide. I know that's big enough, so let's give that a go. And stop sketch, that's good enough for me. Let's label our sketch. Ace dimensions, that will do. Now let's give this plate some thickness. E for extrude and 10 millimeters. And we're gonna to want to click New component. Here we go. So this is our first plate. Let's call this one front plate. And since we're going to be doing a bit of a sandwich layer of acrylic, let's do the second one. So E for extrude again. Click the top face. Let's do 10 millimeters again. And instead of join, let's go new component. OK. And rename this one rear plate. Simple enough. So now let's see how to implement the actual pump itself. We want new sketch on the rear plate here facing us. C for circle. In the center, we're going to be putting a circle and this is going to be dictated by the size of the impeller of the pump. Now for a DDC, you're going to be wanting to use 42 millimeters. So let's type that in and stop sketch. That's good enough. Let's name this one impeller cavity will do and then click E for extrude select our circle and go minus 7.5 that's how deep this particular one goes okay and then just for the inside I'm going to be adding a little radius just to this edge here by pressing F for fillet and 0.5 this isn't essential, it's the kind of thing that I would do with a bullnose end mill if I'm making it myself. If you're sending it to someone else, you may want to omit it, it might make it a bit cheaper. Alternatively, if you know they've got the tooling, you can add this and it will just add that little nice round edge to this side. So now we need to add the inlet, and this goes in the center of this circle here. So, new sketch, click the center, save circle, and we're going to make this 8 millimeters. Stop sketch, either extrude, minus 2.5, no definitely not 21.5, that's crazy, minus 2.5, and that will put us through the first plate because we're 10 in total. Now the premise is that the fluid will flow in through this hole into the impeller which is going to be spinning around it's going to throw it around to the outside and then it gets pushed down to the outlet later. So. We're almost done on this side, in fact, it's that simple for a DDC. So let's make the mounting points. Click again, new, well, let's name this one first so we know exactly what it is. We'll call this pump inlet. And we'll create a sketch, choose our top face. Now a handy tip for this one is because it's just a simple four holes all in a square pattern, you can choose the center rectangle tool, go from the center here, and let's click construction for this one just so we can keep it nice and clean and we want to go 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters stop sketch now the reason we did this is because at each of these corners we can insert a hole you can see how there's a little white dot appearing so we're going to use h for hole command and we click one there one there one there and one there. Now I've been using this already today so it's got some presets in but we don't want to use these particular ones this will put things right the way through the plate so we're going to click simple and we're going to have a nice make sure it's nice and flat we want tapped and we want full threads so we obviously don't want it to be 17 millimeters seven will do just fine Make sure it's checked to four millimeters here. When you first start up, it might be some wacky number like 28 or something. Just select the right one and you'll be fine. That works, I think, okay for me. 
looks like it's all going to the correct depth. Click OK. And there you have it. That's the actual pump integration itself. So how do we integrate it into a distro? Well, all we need to do is add the inlet and outlet channels. So how do you do that? Well, let's take a look at the outlet channel first. I think that's the most important of the two because that does all the meaty work. Adding the inlets, not very hard at all. The outlet is the important one. So we're going to make sure we want to add it to the same plate. It's going to be this rear one, but you have to add it from the other side. Now, if you look at a pump top from the front, the impeller looks like it's going to be going anti-clockwise. It goes clockwise from the rear. So that means you want to have the outlet running down this side over here of the circle. So first up, let's just get rid of this front plate, make it invisible, pressing the little light bulb. And we're going to be cutting from this side inwards here. So new sketch. Now turn it upside down. I'm going to use the project geometry command. So P. I'm going to project that and we're going to project the inside here. Click OK. And now we have all of our geometry. In fact, we probably want to turn this around like this so that bottom is in the correct orientation. So the way I'm going to be doing the actual thing itself is I'm going to take a slot. So this is a center to center slot and I'm just going to draw it over here somewhere. That will do. And let's make it, say, 11.8 millimeters. Now I've chosen that because 11.8 millimeters is the size of a hole that you'd want to drill for a G1 quarter port. Now you could make this bigger or you could make it smaller. I find 11.8 works very well just because it aligns everything up. You can also go, if you go bigger, you can have a little lip around the um, fittings and that looks nice too and it does work very well. If you go a bit smaller, it's a little bit trickier because you have to make it wider at the port, but again, it'll be fine. You'd have to drill it from the other side though and that adds you know, another level of complexity which you probably want to avoid. So you don't want to go much smaller than 11.8, but of course you can go bigger. There's a very valid reason for not wanting to go too big here and that's because you'll be seeing later that there's a bit of a clearance problem if you go too large because you've got O-rings on the top and the bottom and I'll show you how that affects it later. So we're good for now, we're gonna go with 11.8 and let's put some dimensions in. We want to have this bottom port, I think, 20 millimeters from the bottom. That's quite good. Right, so how do we want to place this? Well, I found these dimensions here work quite well for me. Construction, press L for line. Let's go to the top here and let's go here. Now I'm gonna draw this wonky on purpose and you'll see why now. One thing that I like doing is I draw it wonky just to make sure it doesn't accidentally snap into anything uh, that I don't really want it to be part of. And then you can use the constraints here. Let's go horizontal vertical for this one. And now this one will always be vertical. And then using the constraints again, we're gonna use the tangent and that will take this line and make it tangential to the outside of the pump. So the pump impeller cavity here is going to be a tangent to this construction line. Now that's handy because now we can do this. We can make, firstly, this line can be made parallel to that, just in case it's not already. And then pressing D for the dimension, we can take this one and this one and we can add another value. So let's make it five millimeters. So you see it overlaps a bit over here. Now let's add another line from the center here to the outside edge. Now you see this at the moment, we haven't constrained it. So it can move up and down a bit. It's a bit jittery at the moment because there's obviously something there. But if we pull it over here, D for dimension, let's dimension it against this line. And we can make that 12 millimeters. It brings it down to here. Right, that's fully dimensioned up. Let's stop the sketch. 
So let's firstly name this one pump planting holes. That works for me. And we'll name this one outlet rear. Being able to keep track of all your sketches is a really good idea because when you've got a big sketch and a big job, you might have 20, 30 sketches or so. So being able to just find out, find them all, just with knowing exactly which one is which, is really handy. So we've now got our channel drawn in, E for extrude. I'm gonna click both of these. And we're gonna bring it down seven millimeters, maybe. That works quite well. And you can see it cuts into the circle over here. And this is what provides the whole pump direction. The impeller is going to be spinning around this way, like this, and it's going to push the fluid through this hole. Now you can try going to town on this and making it more efficient. You see you've got some lip here. This is the sort of thing which can add some vortices and you know harm flow a little bit. Real world performance, it doesn't actually matter that much. Uh, and if you ever get to a point where you're very close to pushing that boundary, you've probably got other bottlenecks that could improve it more. Um, if you happen to be more proficient in CNC machining and you've got the, the access to it, then you can make this as fancy as you want. The professional tops tend to be thicker and they drill in from the side. Uh, that's very difficult to do for distro plates. So I prefer just to do this very simple method. I've done it in many, many plates and it does work very, very well. But at the moment, we've only got half a plate. So let's just do the front now. Let's make this one visible, make this one invisible. And we want to sketch on the inside here. And now we're going to play jiggery pokery a little bit. So we're going to make this visible again, and that invisible. We're going to turn this around. We're going to click project geometry. We're going to project this whole face here. And then we're going to turn it around. And you want to know where all the screws are as well. This is quite important. So we're going to project this face as well. Click OK. Now this is important because if you don't know where these screw holes are, certainly a lot later on at least, it's going to be quite difficult trying to keep track of them when you're adding in the screw holes. And you could end up with a clash going through one side into one of these. It does happen, especially when you get more complicated plates with lots of runs everywhere. So. Let's hide the rear again, go back to the front. And let's add a slot here, center to center. And we're gonna go from the middle this time. Go straight up. We're gonna do the same 11.8. Trusty measurements. And just like with the previous slot, we're gonna go 20 millimeters from the edge. Stop sketch, E for extrude, and choose this channel and this channel. And I'm going to go minus five. Obviously, you can go deeper if you want. Five works quite well for me. I find it's good for the threads and it's quick to machine. So, this works for me. I'm going to call this front. So these are the channels which are going to be seen from the front. This is the front here. So you're going to be looking through the plate and you're going to be seeing these channels. Now it's time to add the O-rings and you're going to want to add them to this side. The reason being, if we look at this side over here, obviously this part is very, very thin. So if you have an O-ring channel, which goes down another one millimeter, it's only two and a half millimeters thick. That's going to put a lot of strain on this plastic and I wouldn't want to do that. So. You're much better off leaving that at 2.5 millimeters, which is already quite thin, and instead putting the O-rings on this side. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to click Create Sketch, and we're going to use the Offset tool. So we press O, and I like to make my O-rings 1.5 millimeters offset from the channels. So we're going to go O 1.5, O 1.5. And then I'm going to click O again, and I like to make my O-rings 2.2 millimeters. Their channels are 2.2 because I use two millimeter O-ring cord. So we're going to add three points. We're going to do 3.7 here. That's 2.2 plus 1.5. 
And we're going to do the same on this one, 8.7. Let me notice these two come close, but they don't quite hit. And that's why I've staggered this one so far down. You could also do smaller channels like over here. You can make this the same size as the inlet port and make it expand later. I've done that before in some builds that works better for different orientations sometimes, but this will be fine. It's a nice and simple approach. Stop sketch. Whoops. Went a bit crazy there. Extrude. Let's choose our O-rings. Minus 1.2. That's how deep you want to have it go. I go into this in a little bit more detail in the other video. So if you haven't seen that, do check that one out if you're interested. But for now, we have some channels. I'm going to call these O-rings. And finally, let's add another sketch to here. Project geometry, project that, and we want to project over here. Let's do that one again. That's much better. See for circle. I'm going to go to the center here, 11.8, and we're going to do the same down here. Sketch. We're going to call this one ports. Okay, extrude. Minus five. And now we have our ports. Now to this, let's go and add some screw threads. Click these two. Control to add that one as well. I'm going to change from metric to BSP pipe. Automatically goes to one quarter because that's the closest one. And we don't want to go all the way down. We want to go just five millimeters will do me. So five. Beautiful. So it's getting there, but it's not quite there yet. We obviously need to add some screw holes. And this is the last step for this. I'm going to create a new sketch. And just like before, we need to project all of our geometry so we know exactly what we're doing, where we're working. So we're going to start with this one. There's B. Click the channel, click this channel as well. Have both of those. And then we're also going to project everything on this side. So P for project. Okay. Let's go back to the, let's go back here. We can have everything visible at this point. Now, normally I'd use the method that I showed in the uh, distro video, uh, just because it would usually be the simplest way because these channels tend not to go just, just to here. They might go all the way over there somewhere. But this is very small, so let's forget about that. And let's just click, go with points. So points, and let's put one at the top here, here, here. Let's put one here because this is that center point of the line. That seems like quite sensible. Actually, let's not do that because that's a silly thing to do. Now, why is it a silly thing to do? Simple. I'd be putting it straight through the O-rings. Let's click over offset. And we want to put this out five millimeters just to help us make it a construction line. And we're going to do the same here. This is the pump impeller cavity. You obviously don't want to put any screws through that. So five millimeters. And we're going to do the same for this one. Five millimeters. Right, now we're a bit better prepared. So we're gonna go with point. We're gonna put one there. And here. And here. And there we go. There's our center point. Let's put one down there. Put another one there. Let's go down to the bottom here. That looks good. Lovely. There's our center point. Uh, here we go. We can put them where the plates intersect there. I think having one over here is quite a good idea. And then let's put one out there as well. That's probably good enough. Now we want to make these so they're not just completely random. So Elva line, we're still doing a construction line. So Let's draw to the center there. 
let's draw across there and let's draw from that one to that point there d for dimensions let's maybe make that 50 millimeters well 50 degrees even you could try doing degrees probably more successful than millimeters we'll make that one 10. so now we've got 60 between those two which seems quite good and that's fairly even to this point over here right that seems good enough for me and much like earlier we're going to use the whole comp whole command and let's select all these points that we just drew it's really important just to be careful when doing this because it's very easy by accident to have one of these line up with say a previous hole like one of those or an o-ring like I almost did there without putting my offsets in or going through the impeller cavity and this is quite a large area so you want to have a decent number of screws here just to give a good even pressure throughout it because you don't want anything leaking out at this point um, and it definitely can happen so you just want to be very careful here so that we don't have to do lots and lots of different operations let's go with counter bore let's make the whole total depth 17 millimeters because we want to cut through both plates let's make that top one 10 Make sure that the thread size is still four millimeters. And that will go all the way through both plates. Lovely. Now I think it's about time we just add some countersinks. Let's add some chamfer. Now you can obviously do this using the hole command as well. But since we used countable to get the two holes, it works quite well doing it like this. If you're doing a pattern, then obviously you just do it once. You don't need to select everything. 2.2 millimeters works beautifully and let's just finish this off with a nice fillet on these corners let's make that 10 millimeters and we'll call this one channel holes perfect and that's a completed distro pump now it's hard to see like this, so let's click A to change the appearance. And let's choose something nice and clear, like, uh, where is it? Let's see, glass, frosted glass works nicely, I think. Beautiful. Now you can see our handiwork. So, if this was sitting in a build, it would look like this. You'd have the pump would be on the back, the inlet would be coming up the top into the center, flows around, and then comes around to the side. And that is how to make a DDC pump top. Of course, you can change the design, you can throw around different ideas. This is just a good baseline to start off with. And it's also a good point to move on to the D5. So let's take a look at how you do that. Right, so I've loaded myself up with a nice large coffee. Let's get going with the D5 plate. So much like with the DDC, we're going to be working towards making something a little like this. It's a very simple plate design that's more of just a proof of concept. I'll show you how it works and then you can make your own version and make whatever changes you wish. The main change between a DDC here is that we have a retention bracket and we're going to be designing that one up as well. This is a particularly simple bracket that I like to use just because it's easy to machine. It's made out of the same 15mm acrylic that I'm going to be using for the rear of the plate here. Now it's a little bit bulky, so if you did want to cut down, you could use something like aluminium or a stronger material like acetal, which is more resistant to pressure and tensile forces. Uh, the issue with the acrylic one is of course, you need to make it a little bit thicker around the sides just to prevent the screws from tearing it apart, but it does work very well and I've used them quite often. And it doesn't need to be just this exact shape either. So if we take a look at this one that I used in the 1000D, it's incredibly funky. Notice we've got the placement of the screws is all over the place and it's got some interesting aesthetic features that go all the way around. And this basically makes it wrap around some parts that I've already got. So the handy thing about these is you don't need to be really strict with them. Another thing you can do is maybe use a different mounting mechanism. So you can make something like this or you could have one with an external screw thread. That's the sort that you'll find on most pump tops like the ones from Bitspower or Thermaltake and EK. Alternatively, you can go with as simple as you possibly can. It's up to you, it depends on what you're able to machine and what you're able to design. I like this one because it's simple, it's risk-free, and I know it's not going to cause me any issues down the line. 
But if you were maybe doing, say, a medium-sized batch of uh, these kind of plates, say you had to make 10 or 15, then you might want to choose a different mechanism, which allows you to just slot it on instead, and then you only have to machine the small part using the double-sided ops, which is easier than trying to do lots of large ones. But for now, let's take a look at how to create a piece like this. If only you knew just how many takes this has taken so far. I feel like Tom Cruise in Edge of Tomorrow or something. But in essence, I'm going to be going through this fairly quickly, much like with the DDC one, because some of the content has already been covered in the previous sections. If you do want to download the file, it's linked in the description. You can play around with it in Fusion 360 yourself for any kind of measurements and reference points that you may want to take. So let's start the new design, new sketch. We're going to use center rectangle again, go from the center point, we're going to make it 150 millimeters tall by 90 wide. That works for me, stop sketch, I'm going to label this one base dimensions, e for extrude, I'm going to go up 10 millimeters and we're going to make it a new component. Label this one front side, E for extrude, same face. I'm going to go up 15 millimeters this time. I'm going to click new component. And this is because the pump impeller is much thicker on a D5 compared with a DDC. So we need a thicker piece of acrylic. I'm going to call this one rear side. Now let's mount the actual thing into itself. New sketch. I'm going to go from the center, circle. The size for the DDC is 42 millimeters. We're going to go bigger this time. So we're going to go 49.5. Stop sketch. Impeller cavity. Evo extrude center minus twelve. So we're going twelve millimeters down this time. F for fillet. I'm going to add a four millimeter fillet here. This part is optional. I like to machine this. It makes it a little bit smoother. It's very easy to add a fillet like this with a ball end mill. Of course, if you don't have access to that sort of thing, just use whatever you have. So it's either going to be flat or you can use a chamfer mill, something like that. That's how I used to do it before I could do the rounded edge. We're going to not extrude anything yet because we have another sketch. I'm going to do new sketch, center point here. Much like with the DDC, it's had a 10 millimeter one this time. So again, a little bit bigger. Pump inlet. E for extrude, minus 2.5 millimeters. You know what? Let's actually use the correct depth. Let's edit that to minus 3 on auto mode. Now we've gone all the way through the 15 millimeter plate. But unlike the DC, we're going to have to add an O-ring. So again, new sketch. Our O-ring size, let's go from the center, C, circle, and we're going to be doing 52.5. It's the internal. And then the external is 60.5. Now make sure you do measure your O-rings. Not all O-rings that come with pump tops are the same size. You can't go wrong if you just simply measure them. This has worked very well for me with the ones that I get sent. I tend to use a lot of the ones from Thermaltake and EK, but if you're using from other manufacturers, double check everything. And of course you can always buy O-rings by themselves. So you don't have to use ones that come with it. These are kind of fairly standard sized O-rings. So you should be able to source them online, no problem. Stop sketch, pump, O-ring, extrude, minus 2.4. Right, fantastic. We've now got the basis for the mounting point. Let's add the channels onto the other side. So to do that, we're going to just flip this around here. We're going to click the light bulb, make that invisible, new sketch. And then we're going to project the geometry from the other side. We want the inside here, this top ring and the outside. Brilliant, and let's put it all like that. Let's put it the correct orientation. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a few construction lines first to this. So elf line, click construction. Let's add one here. And now I'm making it wonky on purpose, that one. 
This one I'm going from the center directly outside. I'm going to be using the default constraints. You can see it's snapped to be nice and perpendicular here. I'm going to click parallel, make this line parallel to this edge, and then I'm going to be using the tangent to make it tangential to this interior line here. So this is the line created from the interior fillet, the four millimeter fillet. And that's a good point to put your channel. So let's do that now. We can use the slot. We're going to start here. I'm going to drag it along this line. And uh, we don't want this to be a construction, so let's click that off. And I'm going to use my favorite 11.8 millimeters. Again, that's the same size that you'd use for adding in a G1 quarter port. That's why I like that size. We're going to put the end here 20 millimeters from the bottom. And then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to bring it down three from here. Because we want it overlapping with the circle, but we don't want it overlapping the whole way. We don't want a really wide channel here because we're going to be having O-rings going from this side here on the front channel and this channel. We don't want those to overlap and we want to have a little bit of a gap between them because that puts less stress on the acrylic itself, makes it a little bit thicker. So you're less likely to have stress fractures or any cracks or any kind of mistakes during the machining. So that's quite easy for that to happen, especially if it gets very, very thin. If it's 0.5 millimeters and there's a little bit of wobble, you're doing it at home, it's a little bit risky. So I prefer to have a thicker gap where possible here. Stop sketch, that's good enough for this. Let's call it outlet rear because we're going to have an outlet on the front as well. This will differentiate. E for extrude. Let's select what we've just drawn. And I'm going to take that down eight millimeters. Eight tends to work quite well. You can obviously go as deep as you want. Eight's pretty decent though, I find. Uh, it gets a decent amount of the impeller covered here and it doesn't seem to have flow problems. You could go down 10, 12 millimeters just to be uh, just to be extra sure, but this seems to work fine. So next step is probably to draw in the front ones because we want to have these channels in before we do the pump bracket because you can change the way you put the screws on the pump bracket depending on where your channels line up. So we're going to create a new sketch that this time on our front plate and we want the inside here. So new sketch, I'm going to make this visible once more, P, and we're going to project all of these parts first, and then we're going to hide the front side, so now we can see this channel, and we're going to project this side as well. Bring that back and make the rear side invisible this time. So now we've got our rear channel visible. Let's make our front channel. We're gonna use that slot again, going from the center, vertical. Let's make it 11.8 once more. And let's make that 20 millimeters from the edge, just like the other one. Fantastic, so now we've got our slots, E for extrude, select all this material, and we're going to bring it down five millimeters. That works quite well. I find that very easy to machine. I'm going to call these front channels. I'm going to make another new sketch. You can do this at any given point. I'm going to do it now. P, select these two. Of course, it doesn't always like doing that for some reason, but we're going to go C anyway. We're going to go from the center here, 11.8. And we're going to do the same on this, 11.8. Stop sketch, E for extrude. I'm going to select these two and go minus five. That puts it all the way through the plate. Fantastic. I'm going to call this ports. So now we've got the basis for the pump mount. This is how it works. You'll notice I've kept the channel here for the outlet on the left. 
And this is because if you view a pump from the front, it spins anti-clockwise, clockwise from the back. So you want to have to the exit channel going like this. So you want to have it on the left. And of course, you could always just drag this around if you're going maybe from different directions, but that's the orientation you want to have it in. So let's make the actual pump bracket itself. We're going to make a new sketch on the surface on the rear plate. And let's start with the center rectangle. Go from the center here. Let's make it 80 millimeters by 80 millimeters. That tends to work quite well. And we'll add another circle in the middle. And we're going to make this circle 61 millimeters. Brilliant. Stop sketch. Let's call this one pump bracket. E for extrude. Just make sure we get the whole thing here. Perfect, there you see a little, little circle on the inside, just a little bit bigger. And we're going to do a new component. And we're gonna bring this up 15 millimeters. And this is the basis for the bracket. That will slide over the end of the pump housing. Just to double check, we've got the right size. Diameter, you see, that's interesting. So this is 60.5, but I've obviously selected the wrong circle there. So let's just double, double click the point here. Deselect that, keep that as like so. Let's inspect that. 61, now we're at the correct size. Way. We'll call this one bump bracket so we can keep track of what's going on. Bracket. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna hide these two. We make a new sketch on this side. And this is what's going to slide over the top of the housing and provide the clamping force, C. We're going to make this one 66. Eve extrudes. I'm going to go minus 10. Pump bracket, uh, ring. That's not a bad idea. Let's call it that. So, this is the basis for the bracket itself. It's not a very complicated thing to do. Again, you can choose different designs, different materials. This is a good baseline standard. But we need to add some mounting holes. And this is why I wanted to have all these channels in earlier so you can see exactly where to put those. If you're doing a more complicated design, these channels might not come out like this. They might come out of this way or that way and all manner of different directions. So it's a good idea to do it like this and then you can put the holes in where they're not going to intersect with any other parts. So go create sketch. Now for this one, I'm going to be doing something like this. So let's go L for line, construction, let's go from the corner. And let's have it intersect with the perimeter here. Let's make that for let's make that 45 degrees. And we're going to add a point. Let's pop on the line here, that works nicely. And then what we're going to do is we are going to select this point. We're going to go here to midpoint. And now it's chucked it here in the midpoint of this line. Stop sketch. H for hole. Select our point. Now this is massive, we don't want it that big. We only want it to be four millimeters. So what we're going to do is we're going to click counterbore. We're going to make the top 4.1 millimeters. We're going to make that 15, so it goes all the way through this plate. We're going to make the total depth something like 22. That's quite a good depth. That means it's going to go seven millimeters down into the, pre into the plate below. I'm going to click flat because that's easier to machine 
If you're using a drill, you might want to use that and specify the angle. If you're going to be using an end mill, it'll probably be flat. So I tend to stick with that since I use an end mill to make my threads. We're going to go with tapped. And we want to go choose our size to be four. So we've got 4.1 at the top. We're going to have M4 threads at the bottom and it's going to go 15 all the way through. Brilliant. So now we've got a hole. Let's add a countersink to that. We can use a chamfer tool, 2.2 millimeters. Brilliant. And we're then going to use a circular pattern on this particular one. Going to select some features, select the chamfer and the hole, the axis. We want it to go around this pump, so I'm going to select that circle there. Quantity, we want four even ones. Now I know this isn't going to hit the plates. If positioning things yourself, project all relevant geometry and work from there. There we go. Now we've got our holes going all the way around. Handy little tip for this, press A, you can change your appearance. Let's go add some glass. Frosted glass works well. See, now we can see where everything lines up without even having to project any geometry. You see these holes, they pass cleanly through and they don't affect the channels. And that's what we want. So we're almost there. All we now need to do are add the O-rings and then the screws. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's get rid of both the rear side and the pump bracket. New sketch. We can use our trusty offset tool. Select 1.5 millimeters. O. And because we're using two millimeter O-rings, let's do 3.7. So it's a 2.2 millimeter O-ring channel here. And let's do the same for this channel down here. Five and 3.7. And now you see this gap? This is why I offset things earlier and made sure that these channels are only 11.8. If you made them much wider, say you made it 13 millimeters, which is a common size for channels, then these two might collide or get very, very close. You might have to do some other kind of jiggery pokery to make sure that they fit. So it's worth just considering that. Handy thing is you can spot it quite quickly. And if you're doing the design properly with all the dimensions, you can fix it very easily as well. The other thing is you want to make sure that your O-rings are on this thick side, because if you do it on the other side of here, on the rear side here, then the plastic underneath the pump impeller is going to be very thin. It's only three millimeters. If you're going to be machining another 1.2 millimeters into that, you can have very, very thin plastic. I would personally not do that. You want it to be nice and strong so you get a good seal and you don't want to risk any fractures. So this is the safest way to do it. Stop sketch. Let's call the previous sketch here, pump mounting holes, holias. And let's call this one, channel O-rings. Here for extrude. Let's bring this down 1.3 millimeters. So now we have O-ring channels. Make all these parts visible again. All we have left is to put the screws in. Create a sketch. Choose our top face. And we're going to want to project our geometry. So let's make, firstly, our O-rings. So these are our channels. We want to be going from those. And then let's make rear side visible, get rid of that. And now we want to make sure that our pump cavity is visible. So we're gonna do the same with the O-ring channel here and the internal channel here. Right, so now everything's visible. So we know exactly where all the holes are going to be. We also want to make sure that the bracket holes are listed. So we've got one, two, three, and four. This is important because you obviously don't want any screws to go all the way through and mess up with these ones because then you'll have a bit of a clash and nothing will fit. Using offset tool, 
and making a construction line. Let's go five millimeters. Five millimeters from over here. Well, actually, this can be less than five millimeters, but we'll do it anyway because the other rings are on the other side. And we'll do five millimeters from here as well, just for consistency. Now, usually I would use a script for all of this if I wanted to have like a very complicated channel set. Let's keep things simple here and just use some points. Let's choose one up here. And over here, it looks quite nice to me. Let's add another one where these two points meet. We'll do the same down here. And a point over there, I think that works for me. We'll add one up here. And then let's add one at the halfway point. Perfect, there we go. And then I think it makes sense that we should add maybe a point over here and a point over here. So let's add some construction lines. We can make that 45 degrees, make it nice and even. Because you could always make it a little bit more. That's a bit beyond there. So maybe let's make it 50 degrees. Not essential, but yeah, it's a nice to have. Let's add another point back. We'll add one here. And we'll add one here. That's probably good enough for this. Stop sketch. We're going to go back in and we're going to use the whole command. And we're going to select the points that we've just done. Now we've been careful to make sure that they won't clash with any of the other parts. Looks good to me. These are the same settings as before. And let's add some countersinks. Again, if you're doing a pattern, you do this on the first one, and then the countersink is going to be patterned along the whole thing. So you don't click that edge. This is the only tricky thing about using the glass material, is that it can be a little bit challenging to see things. You can change the opacity of the glass just to make it a little bit more visible. I tend to keep the glass off until the very last second and then switch it back if I need it, if I don't need it any longer. And let's go 2.2. Fantastic. And let's call that channel holes. Let's just clean everything up with a nice fillet around the corners. We're actually able to select the correct edges. Let's make it a nice 10. And then let's add a little chamfer to the back here. And then on this side, let's add our threads to our ports. Control to add both. Change from metric to BSP. See, it's already selected G1 quarter. And then we don't want our threads to go all the way down, so click not full length, and we don't want an offset, we want length five. And there we go. That's how you make a D5 pump top. And of course, you can always change the design of the pump bracket. As I mentioned, I've got some funky ones. If this is the correct file, so that's the normal file. We've got this one over here. All sorts of places. I've put the screws in wonky points just because that means it doesn't hit any of the other channels that go through that particular plate. You just want to keep things fairly even and you'll be fine. But there you go. And you'll be able to download this file in the description.
It's all well and good having a test piece like this, but it's a little bit more exciting seeing how it works in a real world component. So let's take a sneaky peek at something that's coming up. And this is the plate in question. It's for our Antec build. It's got a hexagonal pattern reservoir with a DDC built into the bottom of it. So the idea here is that all of these hexagons are milled at different depths and they're going to be reflecting light coming from an RGB strip down the right hand side. So this should be quite exciting to mill. I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to look fantastic with all the lighting put in. It's going to save a lot of space and quite a small case by having everything built in like this rather than a big tube reservoir as well. So this should be fun. And of course, if you don't want to miss this build, make sure you subscribe to us. Also, we'd love it if you could maybe give us a like and a comment. It really does help, makes the channel grow and it helps us support these kind of modding ventures. So looking forward to being able to show you some more CAD stuff in the future. And we're definitely looking forward to having these builds go up. So I'll catch you then.